Welcome to the Daily History Podcast, where we unravel the threads of the past to weave a tapestry of knowledge for today. In today's episode, the French Revolution, liberty, equality, and fraternity, we embark on a journey through one of history's most tumultuous and transformative periods. As we tread softly into the complex tapestry of pre-revolutionary France, let us first navigate through the societal weaves that would ultimately fray into discord and upheaval. It was the late 18th century, and France stood on the edge of monumental change. The French social structure was divided rigidly into three estates. The first estate, comprised of the clergy, enjoyed immense wealth and privilege, paying little to no taxes. The second estate, made up of the nobility, similarly indulged in the fruits of vast land holdings and feudal rights, while contributing minimally to the nation's tax coffers. In stark contrast, the third estate, which included everyone from peasants to urban workers and the burgeoning bourgeoisie, shouldered the brunt of heavy taxation. Against this backdrop, a harsh winter in 1788 led to poor harvests, with bread prices soaring and hunger spreading the common folk's burden grew intolerably heavy. Financially, France was hemorrhaging wealth. Costly wars, including support for the American Revolution, had drained the royal coffers dry. By the time Louis XVI ascended the throne, national debt had skyrocketed. His finance ministers, notably Turgot and Necker, proposed reforms, but they met with staunch opposition from vested interests within the first and second estates. As the general populace endured the high cost of living, the crown's extravagant spending, especially at the lavish court of Versailles, became symbols of the inequality gnawing at the core of French society. Beneath these conditions, murmurs of discontent began to coalesce into louder calls for reform. Pamphleteers and philosophers began to stir the pot of public opinion, disseminating ideas that questioned the divine right of kings and proposed the radical notion that governance should stem from the consent of the governed. The Assembly of Notables in 1787 and the subsequent Estates General of 1789 were attempts by Louis XVI to address the mounting fiscal crisis, yet these assemblies inadvertently set the stage for wider dissent. With each passing day, the ground became more fertile for revolt. The economic turmoil, societal inequality, and a rapidly changing philosophical landscape, driven by Enlightenment thinkers such as Rousseau and Voltaire, laid the groundwork for the revolutionary spark that would soon ignite. France stood poised on the cusp of revolution, a nation of contrasts, where opulent excess walked hand in hand with dire want. It was a powder keg of frustration and aspiration, a prelude to a revolution that would shake the very foundations of the old regime and echo through the annals of history. In our next section, we will witness the ignition of this pent-up fury as the populace of Paris, driven by desperation and desire for change, turns its gaze toward the symbol of despotism and persecution, the Bastille. Prior to July 14, 1789, France was seething with unrest. The common people, burdened by oppressive taxation and haunted by famine, were on the brink of revolt. Amid escalating tensions, King Louis XVI's decision to dismiss the popular finance minister Jacques Necker, perceived as a sympathetic figure to the revolutionaries, proved to be the spark that ignited the flames of defiance. On the morning of the 14th, demonstrators gathered in the streets of Paris, their anger propelling them toward action. The crowd, now a ragtag militia, set their sights on the Bastille, a medieval fortress and prison. Symbolically, the Bastille represented monarchic tyranny, its looming presence a shadow over Parisian society. The throngs commandeered arms from the Hôtel des Invalides and surged towards the fortress. Their initial demands for the release of prisoners and the surrender of the garrison were met with resistance, fueling the fires of their outrage. The altercation escalated into a full-blown assault. Gunfire and cannonade echoed through the streets, smoke blotting the sky. After hours of conflict, the defenders of the Bastille capitulated, and the revolutionaries breached the fortress. While only a handful of prisoners were found within its walls, the fall of the Bastille became a powerful symbol of liberation from the stranglehold of absolutism. 
news of the uprising sparked an overwhelming response across France. Peasant revolts, known as the Great Fear, spread through the countryside, where manorial records were destroyed and nobles' homes targeted. A revolutionary wave had begun, one that would irreversibly alter the political landscape of France and resonate throughout the world. In the heart of the French Revolution, a period infamous for its extreme measures and rampant bloodshed, emerged what is known as the Reign of Terror. It began in September 1793 and lasted until July 1794. During this time, France was ruled by the Committee of Public Safety, intent on crushing any opposition to the revolutionary government. Fueled by fear of counter-revolution, this dark chapter in French history was marked by mass executions, revolutionary tribunals, and a society on edge. At the helm of this draconian regime was Maximilien Robespierre, a figure who cast a long shadow over the revolution. He was a member of the Committee of Public Safety, and his influence grew as he became a passionate advocate for the Jacobin cause. Robespierre's vision of a republic of virtue was enforced through severe means as he sought to purge France of its enemies, which, as fate would have it, included many former revolutionary allies. Under his watch, accusations were enough to seal one's doom, and the line between justice and vengeance blurred perilously. It was an era when the guillotine became a symbol of revolutionary justice, mating out a level of efficiency in death previously unheard of. Erected in public squares, the blade fell on thousands, snuffing out lives amidst cheers and jeers from the crowds that gathered. Nobles, clergy, and commoners alike fell victim to its bite. From King Louis XVI in January 1793 to Queen Marie Antoinette later that year, to the Girondin, the Dantonists, and eventually Robespierre himself. The guillotine did not discriminate, and the terror it instilled was palpable across France. The climate of fear pervaded every corner of French life. Spies and informants were ever present, creating a society where trust was a scarce commodity and silence a cloak to hide behind. Neighbors turned on neighbors, and the air was thick with paranoia. The reign of terror left an indelible scar on the French psyche, one that would color the nation's approach to governance and justice for years to come, ultimately leading to a swift and violent reaction against those who had wielded such indiscriminate power. As the revolution quickened its pace, the veritable head of the French state, King Louis XVI, found himself entrapped within the boundaries of his own kingdom. History marks the 21st of January, 1793, as the day when the guillotine's unforgiving blade ended his mortal reign, heralding a profound transformation in France's political landscape. Shaken to its core, the French society witnessed the birth of an unprecedented republic in the wake of monarchy's fall. Several months following the king's fate, Queen Marie Antoinette also ascended the scaffold. On the chilling morning of October 16, 1793, she met the same grisly fate as her husband. The elimination of their royal visages personified the ultimate end of divine right ruling in France, as the flames of revolution continued to consume the vestiges of the ancient regime. As this societal upheaval overturned the monarchy, the Catholic Church too grappled with a seismic shift in its role and privilege. The civil constitution of the clergy, adopted in 1790, redefined the church's structure and alignment, subjugating it to the state and confiscating its property. Clergy faced a stark choice, swear allegiance to the new order or confront persecution. Traditional bastions of faith were now transmuted into temples of reason, encapsulating the metamorphosis from theocratic sway to secular governance. The aforementioned decrees and the abolition of feudalism tore asunder the very fabric of France's stratified social order. A merit-based hierarchy slowly rose from the estranged classes, with personal ability advancing over noble birth. The careers open to talents ethos established a pathway for propitious individuals, reshaping the social structure into one that reflected the revolutionary virtues of liberty and equality. With the dissolution of the monarchy, France's institutional foundations underwent radical renovation. Legislative bodies, such as the National Assembly, 
redefined their credence, emphasizing people's sovereignty while impinging upon the erstwhile omnipotent crown. It was not just the political guise that was altered, but the core principles that governed the French nation were recalibrated to mirror the Enlightenment ideals that once simmered beneath the surface and had now come to a roaring boil. This turbulent chapter, with its incredible shifts in societal values and its upheaved institutions, limbed the beginning of a new era for France. Through unyielding tides of change, the French Revolution left an indelible legacy, establishing a crucible for modern democratic praxis that would reverberate far beyond its borders, influencing the future in ways unimaginable to those who lived through the tumult of those years. Amidst the chaos and change that the French Revolution ignited, emerged a figure whose name is now synonymous with ambition, military genius, and political prowess, Napoleon Bonaparte. Born on the island of Corsica in 1769, Napoleon's rise to power is a tale of opportunity, strategic brilliance, and opportunistic assertion. After proving his mettle on the battlefield with a series of successful campaigns, Napoleon's fame as an artillery officer shot to prominence during the Siege of Toulon in 1793. This key victory against the Royalist forces and their British allies brought him to the attention of the Directory, the then government of the French Republic. It wasn't long before he was appointed to command the French army in Italy, where his string of victories displayed not only military ingenuity, but also a knack for self-promotion. It was the power vacuum left in the wake of the revolution that provided the fertile ground for Napoleon's ascent. The execution of King Louis XVI and the volatile shifts of power amongst the Jacobins, the Girondins, and the radicals of the Reign of Terror had left France craving stability and leadership. Napoleon, with his decisive action and aura of authority, was perceived as the antidote to this uncertainty. By 1799, disillusioned with the Directory's management of the country, he returned to Paris and participated in the coup of 18 Brumaire, ousting the Directory and installing the consulate, with himself as First Consul. As First Consul, and later as Emperor, Napoleon Bonaparte engineered a transformative era in French history. He restructured the French administration, centralized the government, and initiated legal reform with the introduction of his civil code, the Napoleonic Code. This code has been a lasting influence on legal systems worldwide, emphasizing clear, accessible law and the protection of private property. Furthermore, the administrative and educational reforms under Napoleon laid down the foundations of a modernized French state. By reorganizing the military and drilling his armies with a doctrine that valued speed, flexibility, and aggressive tactics, Napoleon revolutionized warfare. The Napoleonic Wars further showcased his military genius, albeit with a cost. His grand ambitions led to a French empire that, at its zenith, spanned much of continental Europe. However, these conquests were unsustainable and would ultimately contribute to his downfall. His decision to invade Russia in 1812 proved catastrophic, leading to the demise of the Grande Armée and setting the stage for his eventual exile. Nevertheless, Napoleon's influence on France and indeed on the world stage extended well beyond his reign. He emerged from the French Revolution as a leader who would reshape his country, leaving a legacy that endured in the French collective memory and the institutions he established or influenced. His actions catalyzed nationalistic movements, altered European borders, and changed the course of global politics in the 19th century. France's future, once hinged precariously on the outcomes of the revolution, was shaped decisively by Napoleon. From a republic shadowed by the guillotine's blade to an empire echoing with the marching feet of the Grande Armée. As such, Napoleon Bonaparte remains one of history's most complex and commanding figures, born of revolution and forever tied to the destiny of the nation he ruled. As we delve into the final moments of our exploration of the French Revolution, it is imperative that we reflect on one of its most enduring documents, the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. Drafted in August of 1789, 
This revolutionary manuscript boldly proclaimed the principles of liberty, property, security, and resistance to oppression. It embodied the ideals that resonated through the cobblestone streets of Paris and echoed across the halls of Versailles as the clarion call for human rights and the innate freedoms of every individual. In the wake of the revolution, French society went through profound transformations. The feuding classes that once dominated the Ancien Regime gave way to a new social order, one where meritocracy began to overshadow the archaic hierarchies of birthright and privilege. This radical shift did not come without its share of tumult. The revolution's ideological legacies were often challenged and reinterpreted as subsequent governments from the Directory to the Consulate and eventually the rise of Napoleon grappled with balancing power and liberty. However, the societal upheaval seeded the grounds for modern French governance, setting precedents for a constitutional framework and the separation of powers, even though the path there was far from linear or peaceful. Beyond the borders of France, the shockwaves of the revolution were felt around the world, igniting flames of change in distant lands. The principles enshrined in the Declaration, the affirmations of universal rights and the sovereignty of the people, provided powerful inspiration for global revolutions. In the 19th century, these notions found echoes in the movements for independence in Latin America, the struggle for constitutional government in Europe, and even in the abolitionist and suffrage campaigns across the Atlantic. In essence, the French Revolution offered a template for resistance against tyranny and a testament to the power of unified public will. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Daily History Podcast. We hope it has enlightened and entertained you. Please subscribe, and if you have any topics you're burning to hear about, comment below. The suggestion with the most likes will receive special consideration for an upcoming episode. Until next time, keep making history every day.